Kathy Sturm. And on the phone with me, as promised, we have a very special guest just in time for Mother's Day. It's Joe Higgins. He's a psychic medium who is the author of a couple of books, um, Hello, Anyone Home? And also the uh, Everything Guide to Evidence of the Afterlife. Good morning, Joe. Hi, Stacy. Thanks for having me on. Hey, I'm really excited. You're over in uh, you're over in Boston, huh? Or in the in the New England area? You said Rhode Island. Yeah, a little south. I'm in Rhode oh. Island today. Yeah. So, how how big of a state is Rhode Island? Um, it's small. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot smaller than uh, Massachusetts and Connecticut. So we're yeah. not we're not like uh, the states you got out there in the Midwest. Yeah, we're pretty sparse and expansive. It'll take a good full day to drive across our state. A good you know, six, seven hours to get across North Dakota. Wow, we can do it in Rhode Island in an hour. <laughs> you know what, though, Joe? That's wicked cool. That's wicked yeah, awesome. There you go. That's <laughs> an expression. That is wicked cool. It's wicked awesome. So, uh, so you are a psychic and medium. How did you, uh, how, when, did you, when did you know you had this gift? How did you find out? Well, when I was a child, when I was probably seven or eight years old, ten years old, I had a lot of activity when I was growing up. And I say activity, a lot of, uh, some people would call it par- paranormal activity at mm-hmm. night. Um, so I could sense things. I could sense people that were around. I could see lights. Um, so I knew that there was some type of, something was going on. And as I got older, I developed it more so I can be more specific and find out who it is, why it's around, and, and what's going on. But it started really in my childhood. Now I've I've heard it's it's different for everybody. I have a friend who's um who's a a psychic as well and and he says spirit guides tell him things and then um I've seen like Long Island medium and I've seen her and and she says guides tell her and then I've heard from people who um who have people sort of talk to them directly or they can see them. How does it come across to you? Well, it actually that's a good question because it depends. In in if I sat with someone and they wanted some uh, some type of counseling or some type of uh, uh, they had questions they wanted to answer. Then I could tune into a guide, and a guide is a teacher, and okay. that teacher would give us information about what's currently going on in their life, uh, and, and, and depending on whatever questions they have, we would go that way. If someone wanted to contact a loved one, well, let's say mom or dad for Father's Day, mm-hmm. um, I could contact that particular person uh, one-on-one, so they would come oh. through with their personality. So we would recognize, oh, yeah, that's Dad because he's acting a certain way, and I can see him and I can hear him, so I can explain what I'm seeing and hearing, and they could say, oh, yeah, that's Dad. Or they might say, oh, no, that's my uncle, and um, we can find out exactly who it is. Okay. I've always wondered how that works. So then, um, so, so you, at that point in time, you can sort of see them and sort of see what they look like, see how they act. But do you see your spirit guides then, too? I don't see my spirit. I, okay. I can see my spirit guides if I want. And, and years ago, I used to say, oh, can you show me what you look like? Mm-hmm. And they would show me what they look like. And then I would ask them a couple months later, can you show me again? And then they would change their form and then it'd say, which one do you want? <laughs> so it was, kind of, it was kind of funny. It was like, oh, I get it. It's the personality, the information, and the feeling I get. So I know who it is. But the physicalness of it, it could be they, whatever form you want. So they kind of made a joke out of it. <laughs> and you say that you can sit down and tune into somebody, but have you ever just had somebody come through when you're in a public place that is like, I really need you to pass on a message? Do you ever get that? Do they interrupt yeah. your life? I've had a few, t- I have had it a few times, but it's very, it, it, you have to be very careful with that, mm-hmm. because in my belief. I don't want to go up to a stranger and say, listen, I have this information. I have a loved one here. Here's your uncle. He wants to talk to you, blah, 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 because... That person might not be ready. That person yeah. might have cultural beliefs or religious beliefs that he's, he's uh, uncomfortable with that type of information. And I do not want to go in there and cause harm or, or cause stress to that person. So I would never do that unless, right. unless it was something for safety reasons. All right. if, if someone came to me and, and they said, oh, my God, you have to tell this person next to you um, that they have to slow down because in the next couple of miles that there's going to be road, a road hazard and there could be an accident then I would be obligated to tell them, and I would. So but otherwise, you, I'm not just going to uh, walk, just walk up to up. someone and say, hey, I got Grandma here, and she wants to say hi. I know. I've always wondered, uh, when I've watched uh, Long Island Medium, I, they always show these good interactions. I wonder if she's ever had like any really bad ones that they just don't show. 
Well, that's that's a great question yeah. because they might, you know, they, I'm sure they edit out certain ones. Yeah. And you have to realize too that when these people go home, um, to put it bluntly, that you might have rocked their world, right. not necessarily in a good way. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's some people have to take it at a slower pace, um, and so you have to be careful with it. And over the years, I've I've decided that I have to take it on a slower pace with, with certain people because. You know, you, you don't want to upset them one way or the other, and uh, it, that you have to be very careful. Now, I've always wondered, too, when um, when I've heard uh, psychics and mediums say that, you know, somebody came through to warn somebody. So so let's say you are sitting next to somebody, and and you have to warn them that if they don't slow down, there could be a horrible accident. Do you feel by doing this somehow, though, that you've altered or changed what's supposed to happen you know do you believe in that that maybe there's there's a plan that they're supposed to get into that car accident do you ever think about that i mean sure yeah. all the time and when i have i have friends other friends that are mediums and we talk about this stuff all the time we talk about the ethics yeah we talk about you know we changing people's uh, life paths and you know so we talk about that stuff all the time in that particular situation we all have free will mm -hmm. we, we absolutely do so they can't change things but they can give us insight and information about uh, things around us. So we, I could say, you know, I got your mom here, and she's saying slow down on the highway. When, mm -hmm. You know, you go when you go back on the highway uh, because you might run into some type of road hazard, might be an accident. That person can get on the highway and you know hit ninety and just say to heck with it. They right. have free will. Yeah. So I think that's how that particular thing would plan out. There seems to be when the information comes through. There are certain things that are allowed to tell us and certain things they're not allowed to tell us. And I've had them say that to me. Joe, we can't tell you that. Mm. Or I see them looking over their shoulder and saying, can I tell him that? And sometimes they'll turn around and they say, all right, I'm allowed to tell you or I'm not allowed to tell you. So there are people oh. that are overseers of the information that does come through. So I think in that instance, if they were allowed to come through and say, slow down, then I think that was uh, it's part of the process. My mother's come through and told me that when I've been driving on the highway. Really? A lot of people just come in and say, you know, slow down uh, the next couple of days because, you know, you just, you know, you're going too fast on the highway. Wow. That's yeah. so cool. That's awesome. It, it's just so interesting to me. So when, when you first knew you had this gift about how old were you? I was probably about seven or eight when I first started oh. realizing that something was going on. Now, is it true that sort of everybody has, uh, when they're when they're a kid, they have a, a sort of a psychic sense or or an ability to see things or hear things and and whether they choose to, to I, I do think it or we're not. All born with the yeah. ability. Can we all develop it? I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but I know we're all born with it because we all have a certain intuition, and everyone's sort of mother's intuition, and that's very strong, and that's a that's a form of psychic ability. Mm. When we're children, we're much more open to everything. We're we're like sponges when it comes to learning different things, but as we get older. And all of a sudden we start, you know, we're in relationships, we're starting new jobs, we have responsibility, mm -hmm. mortgages. We have a tendency to block ourselves out from a lot of the things that we had open when we were children. Uh, like, like Native Americans in their culture, they're very mm -hmm. open to things, so they, they can have that ability and carry it through their life. But if they get into a situation where they're, you know, living in the big city or... You know, they're constantly on their cell phones and they have responsibilities and this and that. They're going to get blocked up, too, and they will lose that ability to uh, uh, to make that connection to their sixth sense. Yeah, and I, I suppose there's a comfort level, too. You know, what if they're comfortable being able to see things or, you know, if, if it, they allow themselves to keep it or not. That, that's very interesting because I've run across people that do have the ability, but they've blocked it and they say, I don't want to deal with it. And I've had it since a childhood, and these are adults now, and they say, no, no, I can't handle that. I don't want to do it, which is fine. I mean, yeah. that, that's, but they realize that, and they just, they shut it down. But I think it's uh, much more prevalent in all of us mm -hmm. um, than a lot of people realize. But we do use the common terms like gut instinct and mom's intuition, mm -hmm. and that's all part of it. Yeah. Well, I think, that, I think, that, you I think know, that helps when, the, when they want to send us signs also. Right. Yeah, so let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about some signs. Um, uh, t tell us now, let's get into our topic a little bit. What are some of the signs that the deceased tried to use to make contact with us? How, how can we pick these things out? When, when, when someone passes over, 
there's a whole process that takes place. And the number one thing is they decide if a sign is going to be sent to a loved one. And then if they decide it is going to be sent, they decide how it's going to be sent, where it's going to be sent, and all the particulars. Because sometimes a sign won't be sent because a person might not be ready for it. They might not be in an emotional good place at the time. They might be, you know, um, going through the grief process, and, and that would uh, block things. And so, but if they decide that they're going to send a sign, they're going to look for something that's familiar that you will recognize. Mm. And some of the major signs will come through in dreams because our minds are more at ease. And if you have a dream that's very vivid about a, a deceased loved one and you remember it for a long time, even years, Mm-hmm. then you can tell that's an authentic sign, a contact they did with you through the dream. Mm-hmm. Another one is through sounds like music or smells like uh, perfume for mom or like my dad comes through, he passed when I was 13. When he comes around, I smell cigar smoke because he loves cigar. <laughs> and a couple of years ago, I'm working on my computer and all of a sudden the room is filled with cigar smoke. So I'm like, Dad, I know you're here, but you've got to pull back because you're starting to choke me here. <laughs> and, I mean, exactly, and no one smoked in the house. I don't smoke, and um, but I knew Dad was around. So some people will smell, you know, smell cigarettes, cigars, or Mom's perfume, or flowers. But another big one is music, and I think a lot of people can relate to that. That if they're driving down the road and they're thinking of a loved one, and all of a sudden a song comes on that was their favorite, yeah. a loved one, or something they both loved, then that's a sign that they're going to be they're receiving an authentic uh, uh, contact with that person. So then what came first, the communication or the music or the music or the communication? Do spirits tell me to play songs so that they can come through to their loved ones? Or was I thinking about somebody because I, the spirit knows their song is coming up? It, that's it. If they okay. know the song is coming up, then they're going to tap into you and bring in that memory. And all of a sudden, you're going to be thinking of mom, and then the song will come up. So they'll realize, they'll realize that where you are, you know, what song's going to be being played, and um, it, they'll just do a little tap, knock on the door, and all uh-huh. of a sudden the thought of mom or dad will come in, and then the song will come on. And actually, there are other instances, too, where um, my girlfriend, who is a widow, um, when we first started going out, she, I invited her to a Fleetwood Mac concert, and it was like probably two months away or something. And she was thinking, hey, this is getting serious because he plans to, you know, be seeing me in a couple of months, and you know, <laughs> oh. we're, starting to, we're, we're starting to make plans. Yeah. So she's driving down. It's actually, she was going to the mall, and she said to her husband, you know, I had passed over, and said, Jay, you know, am I doing the right thing? Is this okay? Uh-huh. You know, is it okay for me? Because it had only been about three years since he had passed, and, he, and she's like, you know, am I making the right decision going out with this guy? Should I go to the Fleetwood Mac concert? I, I don't know. And she said, all of a sudden, a Fleetwood Mac song came on the radio. <laughs> and then the next song after it was a Matchbox 20 song that was Jay's favorite song. Oh, my god! And they were played back to back, and she looked, and she started to cry, and she says, I got it. She goes into the mall, yeah. does some shopping, comes back about an hour li- later, gets in the car, starts the car up, puts the radio on. The radio goes on, there's a Matchbox 20 song on, and the next song after was a different Fleetwood Mac song. Get out of town. And they weren't playing any special, you know, uh, mm-hmm. Fleetwood Mac, Matchbox 20 type of special thing together. They were just random. Two before she went in, two when she came out. So now, weird. Because that's such an odd combination. Of course it is, yeah. and it's, statistically, that's that's unheard of. Right. So something like that is that's a what I call a wow sign. Yeah. So it was great because then she, you know, she said, "Okay, it's great. I can go out with Joe now," <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and and her and her deceased husband is okay with it. So I thought that was kind of mm. cute, and uh, I actually put that that story in the book because it's a great example of how they will use music to uh, interact with us if we're open to it. If, if if dead people start telling me to play music, Joe, I'm going to freak out. Like if all of a sudden today I have in my head I need to play a Fleetwood Mac song and a Matchbox 20 song back to back, I'm going to die. <laughs> hey, you never know. There might be someone else out there that, that, you know, there's a connection between the two of them. Who knows? Yeah, that's funny. So as do long you... as they, hey, as long as they got good taste, then you can play the music. <laughs> exactly. They're both, they're both good bands. Yeah. Um, so then do so... you ever have, uh, so this is a, this is sort of a, 
a weird question. So then do you ever have, are, are you still with your girlfriend then? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay, so then do you ever have her, her um, ex-husband, her husband come through to you and communicate through yeah. you to her? Is that weird? Yes. <laughs> yes, and he, exactly. It is weird because um, when I first started uh, uh, dating her and stuff, yeah. uh, her husband Jay did come through to me, and a couple of times I didn't tell her. Yeah. And then, you know, as we got to know each other much more and stuff, I said, you know, Jay came through to me a couple of months ago and blah, blah, blah. And, and um, one of the first times he came through, he came through with another man, an older man, and the man was uh, uh, showing off his muscles and, and some other some other uh, evidential information. Mm-hmm. And I said, I said to uh, Nina, I said, would you recognize that? She goes, absolutely. She goes, that's Jay's father. Jay's father oh. was well in shape, always lifted weights and, and some other information. And I said, great, because then that was evidential that it was Jay and his father and it wasn't, you know, just coming out of my own mind. So, you know, the information that came through after that was, was validated and we knew it was coming from the right source. But sometimes she'll say to me, hey, Joe, will you give me a reading? Mm-hmm. I said, okay, I will. I know it sounds weird, but uh, he, he does come through. And, he come, and the thing is, he comes through strong, meaning that I can tell who it is right away. And uh, he's, um, you know, he's cool about things, which is great. Nice. And uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's weird, but it's very, um, how do I put it? It's very comforting mm-hmm. to know uh, that things are okay. And, and, and a lot of times we see this that when one partner passes on, they want the other partner to be happy. You know, they want Mm -hmm. them, especially if someone dies early in a marriage, they want the other person to to have a happy life, to move on, to uh, see other people, and to to live their life to the fullest. And that they're always going to be there if if they want them to be in their lives, for if it's children through graduations or weddings or births, the, uh, the father or the mother will still be around in spirit, but they will still celebrate those activities with their children. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, um, uh, Nina's husband came through at her son's graduation party. He graduated from college, mm-hmm. and we were having dinner and um, at a restaurant in Boston, and we're all sitting around the table, and he came up to me, and he was standing next to me, actually kind of kneeling near the table, <laughs> and he said, I didn't want to miss this. And I could see him, and I didn't say anything to anyone else. And uh, he was kind of a sports guy and stuff, so he had like a T-shirt on and stuff like that. And uh, I turned to him and I said, "TJ, you could have dressed up." And I, before I even <laughs> got the word out, I looked at him and he had a tie on over the T-shirt. <laughs> and he smiled and I said, "All right, I got it, I got it." So, I mean, it's they are in our lives and they will be in your lives mm-hmm. if you want them to be. Um, and that all. all the only way you can tell them is invite them in. Say, so, if you want a sign, please send me a sign. I'm open to it. No expectations. Uh, don't put any strings attached to it. And that's inviting them in. And that's one of the first stages of actually asking for a sign. So when you ask for a sign, what what can you expect they're going to give you? Is it going to be something subtle? Is it going to be something very personal? What like What kind of things are they going to try to relate to you? Both. Because okay. what they're going to do is they're going to find out that's something familiar between you and them mm-hmm. that you're going to recognize. Now, if it's a specific song, like Jay's favorite Matchbox 20 song, we know that's specific. Um, if it's something uh, like um, Mom's Perfume, you mm-hmm. would recognize Mom's Perfume because obviously she wore it all the time. It might have been her favorite perfume. Or perhaps you know she loves Cardinals, and, and, and all of a sudden the Cardinal starts to appear outside your window. Um, these things are specific to that person, and that's how they're going to say, hey, wait a minute, I was just thinking of mom, and that symbol, sign, smell, sound, or whatever, mm-hmm. that's related to mom. And that's how you know it's authentic, because it grabs you. Right. Okay? Because some people will be looking all over the place for signs, and they're going to miss it. It's going to go right over their head. And, or they might say, oh, that's from mom, and it might not be from mom. It's got to be that kind of a wow moment where you're not expecting it mm-hmm. and all of a sudden there it is that's it oh so then what would be some of the reasons why people would not get a sign some people might not get a sign because they're afraid uh for different mm. reasons either they're afraid of the afterlife they're afraid it's too spooky it's too woo woo 
Uh, their religious beliefs say, well, we're not supposed to deal with that stuff, uh, cultural beliefs, and their emotional state. Um, some people might be so um, upset with the loss of a loved one or things that are going on in their life at the time that it wouldn't be a good time to send a sign because they know it's not going to be uh, recognized mm. because there's just too much going on in their, in their lives and it's just going to go right over their head. Sometimes right after a passing, they will send a sign to a friend or relative to pass it on to someone else because they can't get through to the main person because mm. of uh, the grief process or that they are uh, involved in some type of other emotional aspect of their life. So it's not uncommon for you know a friend, cousin, someone else uh, around the family to get a message from a deceased loved one um, that's you know not necessarily in the family. Mm -hmm. So then um, how do you know if it's an authentic sign? Well, the authentic sign will be like a wow moment. It'll come out of the blue, and it will be directly related to that particular person. So it's not like, all right, I'm looking for a sign from mom, and I'm going to be scanning the scenery everywhere I go, and I'm going to be checking out license plates and billboards. And, you know, it's, it's not going to happen. What's going to happen is if you're driving down the road or, let's say, you're shopping, and you're kind of, it's, it's like if you're daydreaming when you're, when you're doing a lot of this stuff, and then you turn around and bang, there it is. Okay. You know, or if you're thinking of mom or thinking of it, if mom just pops in your head, you know, when you turn around, you look down, and all of a sudden, like in my case, I was thinking of my aunt, and I asked, you know, for a sign, and like 15 minutes later, which was pretty quick, you know, I'm sitting in my car, and I look down, and there on the ground is a four-leaf clover, with nothing else around it, and I pick it, and I'm like, oh, my God. You know, that's a sign for my aunt, because she was very Irish. We had Irish bagpipes at her funeral. We had wow. shamrock flower arrangements. Um, so that obviously was a sign from her. No. And she gave me the same sign again a week later. Wow. Uh, yeah, four-leaf clovers. You don't, I've never seen one ever. And for you to I, say two in a well, week. Well, I grabbed it, and I, I, I kept it, and I showed it to Nina, but by the time Nina, my girlfriend Nina saw it, it started to shrivel up. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to put it under glass or something. I'm like, oh, my God. She goes, well, I saw it. I know it's true. I'm like, that's unbelievable. And I asked my I said, Eileen, can you send me another sign? I know this. I, I know I should ask for another one <laughs> because I'm in the business. I know we should be grateful. <laughs> yeah. But, I'm, you know, I'm human too. And four days later, <laughs> we're walking back from the beach to uh, the car, walking through a parking lot, and there was a whole, like a grove of all these uh, uh, shamrocks. And uh, I was walking at full, you know, you know mm -hmm. four or five miles an hour with all the coolers and stuff like that. Nina was next to me. All of a sudden, I stopped. I bent down all in one motion and picked one. And she, I could hear her, her, her saying, no, don't tell me. And I picked it up. And it was another fall. Oh. Two in four days. Yeah. And I haven't found, you know, one in 50 years. Right. So, I mean, that, that's a wow moment, obviously. Right. That's pretty cool. So they do want to contact us, and they do send us signs, and millions of people get them. And they think they're going crazy, and they're not. Nina thought she was going crazy until she started talking to some other friends that were widows and how they were getting signs. And that's the reason I wrote the book, between my aunt sending me two in four days and the signs that she had been receiving, and then more research said that there are tens of millions of people that get these signs. And I thought it would be a good way to explain the process and help people understand that, nope, they're not alone, and they're not going crazy. And once again, the book is from uh, Joseph Higgins, and the book is called Hello, Anyone Home, right? Hello, Anyone Home. And then you have one before that that you wrote to the Everything the one Guide? After that, the, the one after that was the Everything Guide to Evidence okay. of the Afterlife. All right. And the publisher wanted something with uh, scientific studies that they've done, oh. like on near-death experiences and uh, um, things like that, that uh, with a little bit more scientific background. So they work together. Oh, they, the always, they always want to mix the science into it, don't they, Joe? So. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? They always want to mix the science into it. <laughs> they do. And when I was doing the research, I think in the last 20 years, there's been so much research done that's starting to pull, pull it all together. Because I have chapters in there on quantum physics and consciousness. And there's a lot of stuff going on that we just mm -hmm. don't know about. And I think it's much more open now than it was you know, 20 or 30 years ago. A lot of the old myths have to be put to the side because when you start looking at quantum physics 
and, and string theory and, and things like that, consciousness, um, there are things that we don't understand and we have theories about and stuff, and we're, we're all energy, and so it is, science is starting to come together with the uh, spiritual part of, uh, of, of afterlife. So that was an interesting book to write. Now, um, this is going to be like a, um, a, a probably a weird question. Well, I think it is, but maybe you've got it before. Could you, if somebody asked you to communicate with somebody, communicate with somebody that they have never talked to before, like a famous person? And I asked this because I had a conversation this morning with my co-host um, this morning, and he was a huge fan of Adam Yauch, of the Beastie Boys, MCA, and he just right. wants to know he's okay because <laughs> he died last week of right. cancer. Can you do that for people if they say, hey, will you do a reading for me? I want to contact Adam from the Beastie Boys. Well, usually what happens is someone like that, it's, I want to say it's more family members. Someone asked me once if I could contact um, John F. Kennedy. Right. Okay. And to see what he thinks about politics and what happened to him and stuff like that. And so I tried it and I tapped in. And basically what came through was, about his energy, about a family man. That was more important, about oh. how his children were, how their, their lives are going on. Everything else didn't make any difference. Right. So I think, in your case, the musician, I think he would be more interested in his loved ones, right. his family, you know, as opposed to uh, contacting him for, from a, a fan base. Right. You know? But I think that he would, um, you know, I'm just seeing if, uh, when I'm talking to you now, I'm kind of opening up to see if I can pick up anything on the other side. And um, he's saying, I've never left. He says, uh, um, of course I'm okay. I'm still here. Oh. Well, he is. People are playing Beastie Boys music like crazy now still that he's that he only left like last week. He says he's actually sitting right next to you. So which is not unusual because when they pass, they, it's not like they're in some far off distant area. They're right, They're still here. They're yeah. just like in another dimension. They're in another space. And he yeah. says he can hear everything people are saying. Really? Yes. And that's not unusual either because on the other side, you have that ability to hear multiple people at the same time. Um, and, and especially loved ones, you can feel their feelings. Um, that's why they want us to be happy. They don't want us to always be in sorrow and, and, um, and down because that, that makes them feel a little bit down. They'd rather see you happy. Mm -hmm. Remember them, of course, but they'd rather see you happy and remember them. Right. Um, well, that is so cool. Yeah, he's just saying he's doing his thing on the other side, and... Um, He's saying something about incredible. He's very excited because there's an incredible array of people and energy to work with on the other side for creativity. He's kind of blown away. Yeah. He's not limited like we are here for his creative skills. I always wondered if, like, on the other side, they, they continue their same kind of work. You know, like, what you do on the other side? What do you do all day? How do you hang out, you know? I was a wondered. lot of people seem to do what they love. Mm -hmm. um, and, and some people, hey, some people are workaholics and they love to do that, so they do that. Other people study and they learn things. Um, I once asked someone, a friend of mine, to give me a reading and see what dad was up to. And that, my father died early, uh, you know, when he was 52. And uh, he came through and he says, I'm enjoying my retirement that I never had when I was, you know, on this <laughs> side. So that made sense. So, um, you know, and some people. Some people are partying up on the other side. I, I bet he is. I bet I bet MCA is partying it up on the other side. Yeah, I've seen people having cookouts, barbecues, and just <laughs> having a good old time. And other people that are um, learning, and, and musicians and artists actually uh, uh, working with different energies and things like that. And some of them work with us. Oh. So in the future, he might be working with other young musicians sure. to stimulate their growth on this plane to advance their musical careers or their creativity. That happens a lot. 
That's really neat. That's really cool that's that they can do that. It? Yeah, it is. It is that they can still influence things from the other side. If you're open to it, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you're, because when you think about all the great works of art and the great music that's been written and all these things, uh, a lot of that inspiration comes from uh, comes from the other side. Mm-hmm. So I think, and and there was a story out, I'm not sure if it's true, uh, but I, I think it is about uh, Paul McCartney when he... Uh, uh, wrote one of his songs, um, and he was saying, uh, Mother Mary came to me, and a lot of people thought, uh, let it be, and a lot of people mm-hmm. thought it was uh, Mother Mary, Jesus' mother, right? Right. Which I always thought. Mm-hmm. But it was his mother came to him in an apparition in his bedroom one night because uh... he was worried that his, his, his bandmates and stuff, all had girlfriends, and he didn't have a girlfriend or anything, and uh, he was worried that you know he was going to be left alone, and the mother said, let it be, let it, you know, it'll be. So, uh, words of wisdom, let it be. Yeah. His mother giving him this information. So, Oh, that's really good. Cool. So then having yeah, that well, resource, is there ever anybody that you ever want to tap into just to see how they're doing? Like somebody that you really admired in your past? Not like a family member, but like a famous person. A famous person? Um, no. And because after I did that with JFK, uh-huh. I realized that um, the famous person, they're just men, men and women. They're... They're concerned about their family, and I think, like, you know, if I wanted to contact Elvis, you know, I think he'd be more interested in his daughter's life than, you know, a fan or something like that. Because right. once you pass over, it's really your personality and who you are and how you behave towards others on the other side, as opposed to the, the huge persona of uh, being mm-hmm. like a superstar. For sure. But, but I do know people that are brought through famous people, but they brought them through for other family members. Sure. Sure. And they, you know, you know, actually when they when they first came through, the person was like, "Oh my God, I got this star sitting on my couch here, and I think I'm going crazy." And then it, you know, it turns out that the person he's reading for says, "Oh, oh yeah, that's my brother." So then uh, it made sense. Yeah. You know, there was a relationship there, but otherwise, uh, now I'm, you know, I'm not going to tap in and try to bring. King Tut through, or, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, something like that. You're Thomas not going to try to bring book. Marilyn Monroe back and find out what really happened when she died. That yeah, kind of exactly. Thing. I'm going to let Marilyn just kind of hang out, do her own yeah. thing. And, uh, you know, I don't think it's necessary to tap into that. We'll leave that to some uh, ghost hunters or something like right. that. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for being on with us. Make sure you get Joseph's book, Hello, Anyone Home. It's a guide on how deceased loved ones do try to contact us through the use of signs and, and, um, they can, uh, and they can go on my website, okay. too, josephmhiggins.com. Okay. And uh, they can get that book on Amazon or anything like that. And if they want to keep up to date, just come on my website and uh, send up for me an email, and I can t- let you know what's going on uh, you know, with some other projects we're working on. Okay. And do you do you do still do readings for people if they want to get a hold of you and do readings for them? Yes, yes, I do. And um, you can uh, contact me through the website, and we can set something up. Okay. Perfect. Well, thanks for being on with us. What a fun, interesting conversation today, Joe. Oh, well, thanks for having me. I had a really good time, and I think we uh, hopefully we answered a few questions to some of your listeners. Yeah. Well, and you brought you brought MCA to my studio uh, from the Beastie Boys, so I'm pretty happy about that. I'll play a song for him. That'll be my sign for everybody out there. That sounds so cool, and uh, <laughs> we'll stay in touch. All right. Thanks, Joe. You have a great Mother's Day. You too. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.